It was at the beginning. In Acts chapter 11, verse number 14, Peter says, uh, 14 or 15, he says, God gave them the light gift that he gave unto us at 18, the beginning. It's always got to be a beginning point. Now, I want to bring this out now. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1, we talk about in the beginning God. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. That was the physical creation. It had a beginning. You got it? Yes, sir. And it was started off with a miracle. I want you to listen. It started off with a miracle, physical creation. God made the first tree full grown. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The first man full grown. First woman full grown. They were able to propagate. And the seed was in both of them. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Now, there's a new creation that God started to Christ. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. So, at the beginning, please get this, at the beginning. Now, count seven Sabbath days from the Passover feast. Look at me now. Seven Sabbath days from the Passover feast. Seven times seven always equals 49. Is that right? Yes, sir. Are you with me now? Yep. No more. Now, the 50th day always came on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It always came on the first day of the week. Got it? And that's 50 here. That's what's called Pentecost. Now, that's in really significant. And members of the body of Christ ought to know about uh, things um, on the first day of the week, just like. Have you ever thought about it? The first day of the week? You know the church of our Lord got started on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit came on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. The first worship on the new dispensation started on the first day of the week. Is that right, Rod? Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me by your head? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I think I'm a long way further from home than you are. <laughs> I mean, I, I sleep in a bed here that it's, not, it's taking me a while to get used to it. It moves all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you still with me? Yes, sir. Now, with that in mind, Pentecost. Pentecost. When we talk, look at the biblical chapter 43, don't try to take all this down, but it's on there. We, we have copies of it. Is that good? Yes, sir. Now, let, let's stay with you now. Pentecost, <laughs> please get it now. Feast of weeks, you got it. Feast of harvest, uh, uh, first fruits. You got it? That's what it's called. Now, watch this. First fruits of harvest. Watch this. Isn't that tie in with the first members of the body of Christ obeying the gospel? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Pentecost. It wasn't by accident that the church started. First Pentecost after the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ and his ascension to heaven. That was the beginning point. Are you still with me? At mm -hmm. the beginning. Please get this now. Yes, at the beginning. Now, our lesson is at the beginning. At the beginning of what? At the beginning of the Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise your brother. Yes, sir. What? Why you said Church of Christ? <laughs> because that's what's written. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put.
Peter didn't stand up and say, turn to Acts chapter 2. Please understand that. You know, a lot of people don't, people who are messed up on the Holy Spirit, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that when Paul and Peter wrote these different books, uh, he was writing the church. They didn't have a New Testament. And the Holy Spirit was working directly with them. The Holy Spirit doesn't work directly with us. He mm -hmm. works through His Word. Exactly. He took the heaven of salvation and the soul of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Now, the Bible says in, in 1 Peter, I believe it is, 1.12, that they preach the gospel by the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven. Yes, sir. I preach the same gospel that Peter preached, but I'm getting it from the book. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That good? Mm -hmm. Now, put that in mind now. So, supernatural power, they speak in tongues. And they said, how did we every man in the language way in when we were born? About 16 or 17 different languages and dialects, and the apostles spoke it without study. Mm -hmm. Now, brethren, listen to them. All these birds who claim that they can speak in tongues like the apostles, all these Mexicans we have in Memphis and all over that speak Spanish and can't speak English, why don't these folk who claim that they have the power of the Holy Spirit like Peter, why don't they speak the gospel uh, in their language without an interpreter? Amen. Amen. All right. That's good. That's good. Then we had scriptural preaching. Verse 14, our brother, listen to this. Peter preached scripture. Well, what scripture did he preach? It was the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Brethren, all of the Old Testament prophets, all that stuff in the Old Testament, you know what they were called? I like to call this. They were, they were, listen here, they were, they were Pentecost points. All of the prophets pointed to this particular time, the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ and the ascension of heaven. Amen. Please get that. So he preached Christ. He made a strict sermon. Now, once he preached Christ, what do you mean, preach Christ? Look at this. The same. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 talks about the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and his ascension to heaven. Uh, Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11, right? So we have Jesus Christ, the sacrificial offering, and the great high priest. Please get this now. God Almighty is the primitive cause in man's salvation. He will. Christ Jesus is the sacrificial cause in man's salvation. He died on the cross and shed his blood. And his blood is the procuring cause in man's salvation. Now, you got it? Please get this. Mm -hmm. Please get this. Now, you got it? And the Holy Spirit is the revealing cause in man's salvation. What do you mean? He brought the, the, the word down. The apostle prophet wrote it in the book. Good? Yes, now, sir. so once he preached this first gospel sermon about the death of Christ, the burial and the resurrection of Christ and the ascent to heaven, watch this here. Let's look at these people here that's going to be saved. It says, now, look at it. And all this taking place, Luke says, now, when they heard this, heard what this? Heard this. When they heard this, about, see, all of the Jewish people knew that when the Messiah would come, the kingdom would come. Mm -hmm. They knew that. And if you can convince a Jew that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, they'll, they, 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 they're good. Are you listening to it? Mm -hmm. You got it? Now, <laughs> they knew when the Messiah would come, the kingdom would come. Mm -hmm. Now, they had the wrong concept. But they knew that. So when they heard this, listen to this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we What is that? Do. Get. No, we can get religion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're trying to get something. Mm -hmm. What shall we do? Do. do. Hmm. So what is that? Convinced by the law. What do you mean? The word. 
Let's watch it here. Converted to the Lord. Now watch what Peter said. Then Peter said unto them. What? <coughs> Look at this. Watch this now. They already believed. When they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. They believed. Mm -hmm. Peter told them to repent. Before you were baptized, did you really repent? I see more and more people in Church of Christ emerging people in water, and they don't even know the meaning of repentance. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Now, listen to this. Listen to me, Eric. I know you know this. Listen, if you don't repent before you emerge in water, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. You need to hear this because a lot of times we think baptism is some magic thing that all of a sudden is going to make everything just right because he was dumped in the water. Oh, I don't believe no such a thing. You never have to. That's why when you're talking about children obeying the gospel, they need to be properly taught and you need to question them. What is repentance? Now, when I'm having Bible classes, with individuals in the world, the first thing I ask them, do you know what repentance is? Do you know what nine out of ten say? It's confessing your sins, and that is false. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Turn, if you would, to the book of Jonah, 3 and verse 10. Jesus said, are you still with me? Yes, sir. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 28, Jesus said, what thank ye a man had two sons? He came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. But afterwards, watch it. He said, I will not. How much? I'm not going to do it. But afterward, he repented and went. That don't sound like he confessed his sin. Mm -mm. He just changed his mind. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says in Jonah 3.10, what does the Bible say? Read it, son. And God saw their works. Read that they turned from their evil way. Three. And God repented Wait of the evil. Wait a minute. God did what? Repented of the evil. Well, if, if repentance means to confess the sin, did God confess the sin? Why certainly not? Simply means that God changed his mind about burning their eyes mm -hmm. because they repented. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Preach it. Now, what does repent? Now, if you are still in the receiving state of stolen goods, this is where you get in trouble when you make an application. You know, it's all right to say, Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, He that stole, steal no more. But I would tell you, so listen, you can't be stealing his cow. Now, that's me. Now, okay, you can't go over there and steal his chicken. Right. you got to stop this. Right. Amen. That's me. Now, okay. Mm -hmm. If you're cursing, you got to stop it. Amen. you got a problem with people, a different culture, you got to repent. What? you got to change your mind about this. Why? Because God cannot and will not say anybody. Who will not repent? Amen. I'm going tell you what I see in the church of Christ. I've been in 43 years. And the problem I see is folks have not repented. Amen. You ain't converted. When you convert to Christ, listen to me here. Converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said unto them to repent. What? Repent. Amen. Godless sorrow. It's not repentance, but it worketh repentance. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You got it? Right. In Romans 2, 4, the goodness of God should lead thee to repent. God's been so good to us, we ought to repent. You know what? Amen. It, that was hard for me to do. Professor, that was very hard for me to do because I was in the Roman Catholic Church and I didn't want to give up my Jack Daniels whip. And some of you haven't given it up yet either. <laughs> I love Jack Daniels whiskey. What? I said, yeah. Do you ever get an urge for it now? Yeah. It don't send me lying to you and saying I don't. But why you don't take it? It's the same reason that sometimes I want to cross the railroad track and here come a, a Dixie flyer running about 80 miles an hour. You know what I say? You know what repentance means? Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, just stop when you get rid of all. It means stop. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when the train is coming, you got to do what? You change your mind and stop just like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, you can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. you, you, yes, you can. 
You made up your mind to do it. You make your mind up. Unless I don't understand. I don't believe it. Tell you what you do. Reach in the skillet. Listen. And pick a pull up. A hot skillet. Somebody put a hot skillet of cornbread on the counter. Then you don't know it. And you run in and pick it up without a, a midden on right here. Can you change your mind? Yeah. How right. long did it take you to change your mind? Right. It won't take long, will you? <laughs> and wait a minute. So what, what, you going to pick it up? No. Well, why? Mm -hmm. You repent. You change your mind. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to any known sin, change your mind. That's what you got to do. Amen. Amen. Now, these Jewish people had to give up Judaism. Yes. Wait a minute. If any religion would do why in the world did the apostle Paul, who calls himself the chief of sinners, mm -hmm. what Paul was a Pharisee in the Jew religion, why did he change? Sometimes people say, well, as long as you're religious, that's all that counts. Well, Paul was a Pharisee. He was religious, mm -hmm. but he changed. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Well, then, repent. Look at this. I want you to know this thing. Look, look, look at this thing. And say it on the Peter and the apostles, men and brothers, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, watch, repent. Watch this now. Look at the hand. You know what hand is? Conjunction. It's like a cup, cup and cup, man. I don't know what I'm getting over your head now, but I guarantee you, Junior, you know what a cup and cup is. Now, your boy may not know. And I know she don't know. These little chaps over here, they don't know. Do you know what a coupling pole is? Oh, he ain't old enough to know either. Mm -hmm. And I know you don't know. No, he never been on a wagon. Some of you older guys been on the wagon. There's a, a coupling pole run from the front two wheel to the back two wheel, right down the center, and the back end stick out. That's called a coupling pole. It ties two things together. The end is a coupling pole. Mm -hmm. Repent and. Now, if the wagon is going this direction and the coupling pole connected to the back wheel, the front wheel is going this direction, the back wheel is going that way too. Mm -hmm. Jesus right. said, repent and. Right. Look here. Repent and be baptized. They're going the same direction. Somebody said, well, I don't believe baptism is part of the mission of sin. All right? That's what the Baptist said. Mm -hmm. Listen, baptism, you say, you, 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 you were baptized because you already say. That sounds good. And the word and, the call means because of. You already have. That's what they are. Well, Brother Keaton used to say, well, you go to Acts 22, 16. Paul said, why tarry thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away the sin calling on the name of the Lord. It ain't no end there. <laughs> See that? Now, mm -hmm. he said, repent and be baptized. For the remission of sin. Look, for the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. Repent and be baptized for remission of sin. Got it? Now, watch this now. Let's take baptism off. Now, let's take it off a minute. Repent for the remission of sin. Do you repent because you already have it, or you got to repent to get it? Repent to get it. You see it? Mm -hmm. You see that? Now, let's put it. Baptism where it belongs. Jesus, uh, people said, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of sin. Hmm. Now, which one is the most important? My brethren think that baptism is more important than any command in the Bible. That's false. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Did you listen? See, when you start teaching people who are in the world about repentance, Brother Nate, you get to, you get down to the nitty gritty. Right. You get down to where they live in. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to repent, that means you need to know that you've got to worship the Lord on every first day of the week. Mm -hmm. That's some stuff you're going to have to stop. Anybody here like that? I got the answer. That's right, preacher. Are you a preacher? Yeah. Well, I bet you you're a good one. <laughs> <laughs> he prays a good prayer. Tall and good looking and just outstanding. <laughs> Don't make his head swell. No, no, no. He just got it though. I mean, if the man has got it, he's got it. But <laughs> you know, man, man told me, he said, no, you, need, you need to go ahead and be baptized. You need to get wet. I said, I'm not ready to be baptized. He said, Well, why? Don't you believe Jesus Christ the Son of God? I said, Yeah. I said, But see, here's my problem. I'm not ready 
marriages are this. And that's what I feel on the people. Yes, sir. Brother, listen to me. If they are not ready to repent and they don't know what repentance is, don't don't talk about no water you can give them. The drink is supposed to win. Take your bath. Preach. They don't need to be merging no water. Mm -hmm. They're not ready for no bath. Right. Okay. You need to listen. Right. See, because what's going to happen is he's going to come out of that water and hit that door running and you won't see him in six months. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's not so good. Now, so when I got ready, I called him. I said, I want you to baptize me in Christ for the mission of sin. He said, what? He said, what changed your mind? I said, I, I, I had changed my own mind. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's some stuff I had to give up. I had to give the whiskey up. The tobacco. I had to give it up. The cursing. The partying and all that stuff. Then look in your little pretty bills and all that. You do all that stuff. <laughs> you, you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm right with you a little bit. Listen. You, I mean, you got to be honest about it. Amen. You got to tell me, no, you can't do that anymore. You, you cannot, just like all this crazy stuff going on in America, the rioting, the looting, the tearing up, you can't do that as a Christian. Yeah, you got to right. repent of that. Yeah. You got to change your mind. You can't get involved in it no more. See, you got to tell people. Don't want you to get them in there and then tell them, oh, no. Mm -hmm. I need to, I want, I want to know how much money do I have to give. What? You mean to tell me I got to worship, come to every service? Yes, sir. Amen. I said, I need to know how much money do I have to give? He said, who, who you been talking to? I said, I've just been studying. <clears throat> yeah, I've got to give so much money. I work on a job. How much money I got to give? Do I have to make Wednesday night about class? Do I have to make every night of the gospel meeting? Do I have to door knock? Do I have to do evangelism? I'm not even baptized yet. I said, I need to know this because I may not want to do all this stuff. Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that, that's pretty good. So he said, repent, watch it. Connect it to the Lord. And be baptized. Every one of you, this is what you call calling on the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, brethren, this in the name of Jesus Christ be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ does not mean to say it. It means to do it. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. The Pentecostal say you got to say it. No, you don't have to say nothing. One time I was in a gospel meeting down in Texas, called for Texas, Pentecostal say, how you baptized? How you baptized? I said, what do you mean how I baptized? What do you say? I said, wait a minute. You asked me how I baptized. I baptized in the water mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission scene. He said, what do you say? I said, you don't have to say nothing. He said, oh, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, watch this. I took him to Acts 8, verse 26 and following. It says, both Philip and the eunuch went down in the water. Mm -hmm. He baptized. Mm -hmm. Now, what did he say? Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to teach him first. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Got it? Now, here's, here's another thing while I'm on that. Say that he's a mute. Mm -hmm. Say the guy that's baptizing you is a mute, and the guy that's being baptized is a mute. They can't talk. What are you going to do then? Mm -hmm. Acknowledge him. But to acknowledge, but you don't want to say anything. Sign languages, but you don't want to say anything. All right, that's, that, that's good. Isn't it? Well, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, watch this. Cleansed by the Lord for the remission of sin. Brethren, please listen. The greatest blessing that a, any man could have is right here. Yes, sir. Amen. Now you think about this, when somebody in the church upsets you, uh, make you mad, or whatever, mm -hmm. angry, uh, he's not out in the world do wrong, remember this, you need to say, have they had remission of sin? Have they been taught about remission of sin? You know, sometimes husband and wives have get in a few fussing and fighting sometimes, you know, and uh, sometimes if the husband want to hurt your wife, and wife won't hurt your husband, and they want to kill her. Right here. Well, now, watch this. Would you want your wife or husband to die in sin? Now, see, that's where your heart, where, where's your heart? What are you thinking about? Wait, wait a minute. Here you are want to hurt your wife or your children. You want to hurt your neighbor, and they had no way to go off, and then they even heard it. You mad enough to kill them. And you never told them about the remission of sin. 
I'm gonna think about it. Mm -hmm. But I got to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. All right. All right. Let's, let's go a little further here. Now, it said, you know, watch this And then, it said, but we say, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Controlled by the Lord. How does the Lord control us today? By the Holy Spirit through the Word. Please yeah. listen to this. And, brethren, I think this was miraculous. I really do. Because these people back here had to go home. Mm -hmm. And they had to teach other people. Amen. So for an hour they going to do it, they didn't have any test. <laughs> Just think of me. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody said, I, I, I want the same thing that they, they had. You might going to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, another thing while we're at that, anything, just tell me, any, tell me one thing you know about the Holy Spirit that you didn't read in the Bible. Just one. Mm -hmm. Just, no, not two. Tell me one thing that you know about the Holy Spirit that you didn't read in the Scripture. There's no emotion that the Holy Spirit gender in me that the Word doesn't do. Well, that's another subject. Controlled by the Lord, called by the Lord, for the promise unto you and to all them, uh, unto your children and to all, uh, they are far off, even as the men of the Lord our God shall call. And many other, look at this, words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, brother, I'm dealing with the text now. I'm going to deal with the subject in a minute. Just, just, just stay with me. Now, look what we have here. Now, right here. Compared to the Lord. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And in the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now watch this. Continue with the Lord. And they continued steadfastly. Look at this. And the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and breaking of bread and prayer. You see that, man? Watch it. Let me go to the next one. Suitable program. Watch it, see. Hope and fear came upon every soul. Power and many wonders and signs were done by everybody. No, sir. No, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wasn't they baptized? Didn't it say they were baptized? Yeah. Baptized? Now, and they just going to receive the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Isn't it what it said? Now it says many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. What? For what? What was the purpose of the Holy Spirit giving to the apostles? To guide them in the all truth and to prove to the audience that we are people of God, are special witnesses for God, apostles. And what we are saying is true. Many of one of the signs were done by the apostles. That's another subject. All right? And then a participation. And all that believed. There it is. All that believed were together and had all things coming. Right? And sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Propagation. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singing of the heart, uh, praising God and having faith with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. That's the text. That's the text. Now, brother, the reason I preach like this, I saw something earlier in my ministry. Brother, get up and preach. And take a text and never deal with it. Mm -hmm. I decided not to do it. I decided to deal with the text. Explain it. Right. Give interpretation to make the application. Now my subject is taken from this text. All that believed were together and had come. Now who was the one that believed? Is the one that obeyed God. Mm -hmm. right, now all that believed from the beginning, one that obeyed the God, were together. All right, now what happened? What what made them together? Let's, let's run down this one. First of all, we have Christ who died on the cross and shed his blood. Now we have the sinners here. 
The sin, even today, sinners got to hear and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and his resurrection, and ascension to heaven. That he took his blood, listen to this, he took his blood and he purchased one church, Amen. not two. Amen. Now, if you brother, you got a great sin. Amen. Act 20, verse 28. Now, you got to hear and believe this. We dealt with repentance. You know what repentance is? It's a change of heart brought by God and Son. All right? Then you confess with your mouth your faith in Jesus. Then you immerse in water for the mission of sin. Now, do you know you're added to the same church? You're a sinner, and now you're a saint. Amen. Now, look what it says. Look what we have. We have continuation, education, edification, adoration, and adoration. What is adoration? That's prayer. Now watch this man. Are you ready? It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine. Let's stop right there. How are we going to be the same and get along together? The apostle doctrine. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to school people. Amen, sir. Preachers, when you preach, you need to teach people the Bible. Amen. School people. School it. Teach them. Education. Turn, if you would, to Romans 16 and, and verse number 17 there. Romans 16, 17. But in Acts 5, 28, just look at that. You got it? You ought to have, Jeff, you graduated from middle school preaching. You ought to have Pete Moses. You can go to Jeff. Yes, Acts sir. chapter 5, verse 28 says what? All right, come on, help me out. Help me out. Can you help me out there? Yes, sir. All right, what does it say? Acts 5, 28. Read it. Saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. That is, the doctrine. That is. Acts 6 and 16 and 17, it says what? Read it. I caught him off. I know I caught him off. What does it say? Said Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, what? mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to contrary the doctrine. Contrary to the doctrine. The doctrine. What doctrine? That system of teaching. Yes. The apostles' doctrine. Now, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's education. You got it? 1 yes, Timothy 4. Uh, first Timothy 3, 1, charge them that they teach no other doctrine. You got it? Now, First Timothy 4, 6, let's look at it quickly there. You got it? Yes, I'm, I'm jumping at night, honey. I got to jump in tonight. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Read it. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things. What? The teacher. Keep reading. Keep reading. Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good Good doctrine. doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Brother, we got to preach good doctrine, sound doctrine. Amen. Good doctrine means healthy doctrine, wholesome doctrine that uh, make a church well. It'll keep the church well. Sound doctrine will keep a church well. Yes. False doctrine will make a church sick. You want to know why you got so many sick churches in Christ? Because they're not getting the right doctrine. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. School it. It says. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship. What? Corn did. Right? Sharing. What do you mean, fellowship? Brother, listen to this. I want you to notice something. What's first is the fellowship of doctrine. Wait a minute. Doctrine always comes first. Mm -hmm. If you get your doctrine right, back is will fellowship. Yes, sir. But if doctrine is not right, we can't fellowship. And brethren, we need to stop fraternizing with people who, who ignore the doctrine of uh, the apostle doctrine and fellowship and here's an example. I don't want to do nothing with the fact that I'm trying to teach you. What the message is another Catholic, none of What? You hate him? No, I don't hate him. I love him. But I'm not going to listen to him. Anybody here from Texas? Anybody ever cut wheat? Boy, I guess I'm on a crazy guy. 
got here. <laughs> you know, when, when you step wheat with a sickle, you know, mm -hmm. when the wheat is standing or uh, leaning this way, you can take the sickle and cut it easy. But when it's leaning towards you, you cut it and your blade will go over you, you wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. See, when you're with people and you still land with them, it's hard to teach it. But when they're away from you, you can cut them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you can't fellowship with the brother. We got to get out of it. Well, you know, they, they're not that bad. Just because a person is morally good doesn't mean they're saved. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some people are morally good. They probably live better just as well as a lot of members of the church of Christ. But they're not saved. They have to contact the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You got it? Now, yeah. so watch it. You get your doctrine right, we'll fellowship. Now, when you take it, if you don't know the doctrine, you won't know who to fellowship. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Young people, listen to them. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the apostle doctrine, you'll think you can fellowship anybody. Right. Yeah. Have no fellowship with untruth to work of doctrine, but rather reprove them. Mm -hmm. Right? And John said, if we walk in the light as he in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from our sins. What do you mean walking in the light? Walking in the apostle doctrine. So that's the schooling and that's the sharing. Now, and breaking the bread. Well, what is that? That's adoration. That's worship. That's the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, you don't have to take the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. You just run it in the ground. That's what the nomination people say. Mm -hmm. Y'all just run it in the ground. You just do it too much. You run it in the ground. After, wait a minute. Uh, first Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, if Paul gave orders to the church of Galatians, so do you upon the first day of the week, let every one you lay by and so as God has prophesied, right? Acts 27, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. You, when they say, take the Lord's Supper and just run it in the ground, I say this. Uh, Luke said, watch it, uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, uh, lay by and so on the first day of the week. I said, I see you, you're not running that in the ground. Mm -hmm. You take the Lord, take money up every Sunday, though. That's not bad. You don't say you run. And they take it up Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and any other day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see? So get your doctrine right. Brother, do you know you're going to come to worship? And by, by the way, brother, if a person is not in the kingdom of God, their son, their worship is vain. Amen. You can't worship it. Now, brother, I'm going to say something, and I hope you get it. When a person comes to this assembly, and they're not a member of the Lord's church. They're not, they can't worship God. How are they going to worship? They're not in, somebody said they're in the building. They're in the building, but they can't worship. Because mm -hmm. worship is a spiritual thing, and it takes place in Christ. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse uh, 16, uh, verse 21, uh, holy temple in the Lord. So the temple is in the Lord, that's the church. Now, if you're not in the Lord, you're not in the temple. You can't worship unless you're in the temple. Well, where's the temple? The temple is in the Lord. When you're in the Lord, you're qualified and you can worship God. Amen. And sometimes we don't practice close communion. I don't guess y'all do that. Do so again, when they take the Lord's Supper and fruit and vine, and they're not able to church yet, they're not taking the communion with the Lord. Why? Because they're not in the Lord. Mm -hmm. They can do the same thing at home. Get them some crackers mm -hmm. and some, some juice and do the same thing at home. They're not communing with the Lord. Mm -hmm. you got to be in the Lord to commune with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. Preach. All right, that's good? That's good. Breaking up bread and prayer, right? Now, and then it says, and pray. What? Pray. How in the world are you going to pray and you overlook all of this? See, we live in a country, in America, where we say as members of the church follow what the world say and not what the doctrine say. Now, brother, this may hurt some of you. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but uh, boys called me up here to preach. So. Amen. <laughs> that one ain't man there. <laughs> now watch this. Here. You, know, you know what they say? Um, this, this, this is what they say. Listen, well, you know, they took prayer out of the school. Let me, let me show you. Just think a moment. Where is prayer? Wait a minute. Prayer has never been in the <laughs> It's always been among God's people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now let's turn, let's turn this book. Let's look at uh, 1 Peter 3 20. Let me show you something. Pretty good? Pretty good. Now, 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 now watch this now. Oh boy, this is good. We're going to get out of here. 1 Peter 
three twelve. Read it. For the eyes of the, the Lord. Eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Now hold it a minute. Watch this now. Where are the righteous be? The righteous are in Christ and in his church. But what makes us righteous? It's the blood of Christ that makes us righteous. Amen. When we're baptized into Christ for the mission of sin, we come back to blood, and the blood washes our sins away. And when God looks down on us, he sees the blood, and he says, that's my right to serve. Now watch this now. You cannot have, listen to me, you cannot communicate with God Almighty without priesthood and sacrifice. What you say? Jesus Christ is our sacrifice, but he's also our high priest. And how are you going to approach God, a holy God, without the sacrifice of Jesus and Jesus being our high priest and he's our mediator? He's the go-between. Now, how in the world can a Baptist or anybody else say that they can pray to God Almighty? You mean telling a sinful man to overlook Christ and go directly to God and don't even believe what he did? Oh, no. America or anybody else, you've got to go through Christ. That's mm -hmm. right. Eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Listen, read it. And his ears, and are, his ears are open unto their prayers. Whose prayer? The righteous. Brethren, let me stop you. As members of the Church of Christ, always, you don't want to ever cut off that privilege you have yeah. to pray. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what to cut prayer off from anybody. <laughs> Look at this. Sin. Amen. You're a member of the Church of Christ, and you're sin and living in sin, don't even think about praying. Amen. Don't I? <laughs> Don't be sick. I'm up for now. Uh -uh. You got sin in your life and you think that you're going to bypass Christ and he teaches us that we have to repent and you won't repent. See, Simon was so to obey the gospel, Acts chapter 8 and verse 11 to about 14. He obeyed the gospel, but he went south. And you know what Peter told him? He said, Thou heart is not right in the sight of God. He said, repent of this thou weakness and pray. He didn't tell him to go back to the congregation and pray. He said, repent and pray. Mm -hmm. so when, you re when you repent, pray right then for yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait till you come to no building. Somebody pray for you. Amen. You're a priest. You're in the body. And by the way, you're in Christ outside of this building. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. You're a priest on everywhere you go. Amen. Everywhere you go, you are in the church of Christ. And Christ is our head, he's our high priest, and we are priests working unto him. And it always in Old Testament, the, the regular priest worked under the high priest. And Christ is our high priest, and whatever he said, we got to do. Amen, Amen. Sir. Amen. Now watch this now. Here's people who don't even believe that, and then all of a sudden they got the same priest we have. Turn to Galatians chapter 3. Let me show you something here. I'm trying to quit here. Kind of like Floyd Wallace, you know. But if you know what, I'll go over time. Yeah. Look at Galatians. This good? Yes, sir. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 6, I believe it is. Oh, boy. Verse 6. Let me look over here. My mind's not good here. Uh, Galatians chapter 3. Amen. Uh, Galatians uh, 4. Galatians 4 and verse number 6. That's it. Galatians 4, first, Galatians 4, and verse number 6. Watch what it says. I want you to look at this. And because... And look, look what it says. And because... Ye are sons. You are sons. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. Three. Crying of a father. Now, now if, if the sons of God, because you are sons of God, uh, God sent forth the spirit where you can call God our father. You got it? Mm -hmm. Now, after... Heathens can do the same thing we do. Why go through all this? Right. Exactly. If the Baptists and the Methodists and all the Pentecostals got the same privilege of prayer as we do, why be a member of the church? Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's a man that never worked a day in his life. He got the same benefits I got. I say I retired from FedEx and I worked there 40 years. And here's a guy getting the same benefits and didn't work. Oh, no. You don't believe that. 
So that's how you explain to people. We have a privilege and we have the power of prayer on our side. And brethren, we need to exercise our prayer for our president, Amen. for our com country. Listen to me, brethren. You may not like Donald Trump. You may not like him. And I, I know some of you don't like him, but I feel sorry for him. He's the president. Amen. That's and, right. and listen, listen, no matter who it is, God says, pray for him. Mm -hmm. That's right, sir. It is a tear down. Amen. Pray for your leader. Now, who else going to pray for him? Who, who else can pray for him? Donald Trump can't pray for himself. And you know the Congress can't pray for him because they hate him. <laughs> and the Democrats, they hate him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, oh, they're not going to pray. Can none of them pray? Why? They're not in the church. And we need to know this. And I hear them talking all the time, well, we're going to have prayer. Oh, look at you. And sometimes you got a woman up leading prayer. Look at that. See, they don't know no better. Kenny, they don't know any better. So we have to teach them. Amen. Amen. And by the way, women preach it. Where did that come from? They're not in the apostle doctrine. The apostle of doctrine said, I suffer not a woman to teach, or you suffer the thought of a man. So, but to be inside. That's what the scriptures say. But we just run along with her. I see him. Martin Luther King Jr. He's got a daughter that's a doctor, and she's the, she's the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church. Whoopie do. Now, she can be that. She can be that. Yeah. Why? They started it. They're not going to heaven anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And I wonder where, where they going. They got lesbian, homosexual preaching. That, that, you, the, the Constitution gives you the right of freedom of religion. You go ahead and take it. But when you stand before God at the judgment, He's not going to pull no Constitution out. They're going to pull out the Constitution. Exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. And we need to tell people that. And we need to stick with that. We need to preach it. That's right. Amen. Amen. I wish Roy was here tonight. I'd have the Roy and Nan jumping. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's right. And brother, we need to act like we remember the body of Christ. That's right. Amen. Act like it. Be nice to people. But we can't look at we can't let them take and give us this false doctrine we run with. Oh no. They are all trying to get me to compromise with. Them. I don't even deal with them. It, 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 listen, it's it's thousands of them at home. They watch on TV. And they said, he said, do, do you really believe what you preach? I said, I sure do. I sure do. Uh, you, you think I could come to you think you could come to my church and preach? Oh yeah. Well, uh, what, you, what you want me to preach? He said, I just don't, I don't want you to preach that so I can come. Mm -hmm. are, are you listening? Mm -hmm. Now, brother, this is serious business. Exercise of prayer. But well, listen to this. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their pride. But the face of the Lord is what? And the last right word is, is against it. It's spelled against. A G A. A G A. A I N S F T. You know what again, please? The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, his ears are open to their pride. But the face of the Lord is against. And the Lord against you. See, if you ain't sin, he's against you. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can win? Absolutely. You don't want the Lord against you. Let, let me see. You don't want God mad at you. Let me tell you something. God is mad about sin. He doesn't like that. And we live in a country, brother. That's why I'm telling you, we need to pray hard. Yes, sir. Pray hard and live the life because we don't want to ever cut the communication all of God. Eric, we got a privilege and nobody else has got. We can pray to God. And I pray daily and ask God every time I get on my knees, Lord, forgive me my sin. Let my prayers be not hindered. Got it? When you do something wrong, just think about it. When you do something wrong and intentionally do something wrong and just not going to change, your, your communication with God has been served. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, he, he, he will not hear. Wait a minute. Please don't think that uh, proper worship is a substitute for uh, uh, bad living. Right. Mm -hmm. Please listen. Don't think that you can worship God 
and then live any way you want, Amen. he'll accept it. He That's won't right. accept none of it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Well, I'll talk now. Oh, you're getting started, bro. <laughs> I'm going to change the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pretty good? Now, so we have to get You got it? Now, now, now watch this, isn't it? Watch, watch this. In Romans chapter 12, verse 5, now watch this. Here's an account. Brothers, please listen to me, because it may come a time in America. I may not see it. You may not see it. These little children may see it, and some of you teenagers may see it. When the church of our Lord will be persecuted. And it won't be anything we can do. It may be persecuted by the government. Who knows? Well, let's look at the count in Acts chapter 12 and verse number 5. You know, they, they killed James. You remember that? They killed James. Nobody replaced James. They killed James. They stoned him. Oh, whatever. Killed him. In, anyway, Acts 12 and verse number 5 says what? Acts 12, 5. Peter. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Wait a minute now. These Jews that locked Peter up. They'll lock Peter up. James is dead. Now they lock Peter locked up. Read it. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church Wait unto a God. You mean to tell me they didn't get signed and run down there around the jail? <laughs> Let <laughs> Peter go. Let <laughs> Peter go. Let <laughs> did they, did they mark? No, no, sir. Wait, wait, brother, are, are you listening? Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, Peter didn't care. Why in the world didn't they get the sign? Because the government was on them. And they was killing, they killing the apostles. Peter didn't him, huh? Peter didn't him, they let him out. Look here, look here, listen. Let me tell you something. Now, instead of them getting signs and marking, it says prayer was made of the church. Yes, sir. Now, let me tell you what happened. Quick and good. God heard and answered that prayer so quickly. That when a rover came and asked the door, like to get her to death, she thought it was pain. She thought, oh, no, that can't be true. See how quick that? Now, listen here. God, sometimes, brethren, God has to step in and take over. And when God takes over, you keep on reading down in Acts where this guy stood out in a rage. You know what I'm talking about? And how he was so famous. And the worms ate him up. The worms got him. See the power of prayer? Do you see that text there? Romans 12, I mean, uh, not Romans, Acts 12, around verse 25, is that it? Somebody's got it. Verse 23. Read it. Let's read it. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. Read it. And he was eaten of worms. Wait a minute. See, brother, I, I'm trying to, I hope you can see this. Do you know how important you are as a member of the Church of Christ? Do you really know that how important you are, the position that you hold, and the power you possess in prayer when you pray to God? God will take yeah. care of us. That's right. Sir. Now listen to me. It doesn't make any difference who the next president be. God is going to take care of us. Mm -hmm. Right, sir. Yeah. You got it? Mm -hmm. We hope it will be out. <laughs> but I don't want nobody to jump on me. But, but in, anyway, whoever it is, God is going. Now, now, watch this now. God has been taking care of us all our lives. Yes, sir. There's never been one man as God. Mm -hmm. You got it? Now, God took care of the church back then. When the church was in persecution, God took care of it. They prayed. This Bible, I want you to go home and read this. The church came together and they prayed. Mm -hmm. They didn't march and tear up stuff. Let Peter out. Oh, no. Wasn't none of that. They pray. Sometimes we need to rely on the Lord. Is that pretty good? I know an incident in Chronicles. I'm going to have to quit here. Where Israel, the northern kingdom, had 8,000 men. And the southern kingdom had 4,000 men. Are you with me? And they went to battle. And Judah won. 5,000 northern kings were killed. And uh, uh, 500,000, whatever it was. But anyway, you know what the text says? They won because they relied on the Lord. 
Now, you know what? You just think I'm going to talk. Let me just show you. Turn to First Chronicles there. 13, 18. Let's do it quickly. We're going to close out here. Is this good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to rely on the Lord. Amen. 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 Second Chronicles, uh, I think it is Second Chronicles. 13. Uh, I think right there. Yeah, Second Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Eighteen, maybe. What is it? Eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. Thirteen, eighteen. Thirteen, eighteen. Whoever had it, let's read it there. Thus the children of Israel were subdued at that time. Read it. And the children of Judah prevailed. Read it. Because they relied on the Lord That's God. It. Brethren, in this country we're living in, we're going to have to rely on the Lord. Because we got some crazy people in this country. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff going on. Men want to marry men. Women who want to be men. It's crazy stuff. Amen. And our children, and the Lord have mercy, I hate to see the kids, have to go through this school. Yes, sir. Amen. Look at these children. They don't deserve this. Amen. I was telling my son and daughter, my grandkids don't deserve this godly that I see today. They don't deserve These kids don't deserve it. So let us pray. That's God to help. If you're here and you remember the Church of Christ and you straight away, all you have to do is repent toward God and pray. And if you're here, you ain't gonna break the God. The Bible said all believe were together and had all things come. Faith, repentance, confession, baptism in Christ for the remission of sin, and the law will add to you to the church. And all you have to do is continue in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. Die and go to heaven. If you hear that's your decision, do it right now. Together we stand and sing. <coughs>